The Man in the Doorway So, about two years ago, my family lived in Arkansas. With the layout of the house, I'd have to sleep in the living room and eventually we'd wall it off and put in a door. Next to my room was the laundry room and next to that were the stairs that went down and out the back door. One night, I was having trouble sleeping and I was up late watching YouTube. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs and into the kitchen. I just assumed it was my brother, so I stayed in my bed and continued watching videos. I noticed someone was looking at me through the doorway to the stairs, and I remember thinking it was my brother, so I asked, what do you want? There was no answer, so I shined my light at him and immediately realized that wasn't my brother. He just stood there staring at me for what felt like an hour before he laughed and ran down the stairs. I ran to my mother's room as soon as I heard the door slam and told her about what happened. Obviously, by the time she got out of bed and went to look, there were no traces of the man. The next day, I was very tired, so I tried to take a nap, and just as I was starting to drift to sleep, I heard footsteps heading up the stairs again, along with a man who sounded like he was whispering to himself. I knew it wasn't my brother from the voice, and I immediately ran to the bathroom and locked the door. He stood there banging on the door for a bit, and then went to my sister's room, which had a door that went into the bathroom. And that one had no lock, so I had to push myself against the door as I felt him ramming against it. I started screaming and crying until I heard footsteps coming up from the front stairs, and then the man ran out the back. The footsteps belonged to two policemen who were called because of my screaming. I told them it was the second time something like this happened, and I told them that the man came from the back both times. They went ahead and searched around the back, and they found a man in the back in some sort of storage closet. The guy turned out to be a meth addict that didn't know that the last people that lived there had moved out a few weeks before we got there, and they owed him money. I'm lucky to be okay. A Frightful Hallucination I've always had incredibly vivid dreams that felt weirdly real to me. I'm not very good at remembering them either, and I often find myself considering where I go in those dreams and who I'm with. There's an overbearing feeling to me that I'm going to other dimensions or something, and what happened in this story really solidifies that theory to me. I was on the verge of sleeping when I heard a man's voice scream my name. I woke up to a start immediately. I remember it feeling really hard to shake the fact that it was fake, as it felt so real. I could hear his voice just ringing in my ears. I started feeling super unsettled, so I turned over to cuddle my boyfriend. As I did so, I saw two women who looked like stereotypical old prostitutes leaning over my bed from the right side of us. I was completely shocked and disturbed at the sight of them. They must have been in their late 40s or so, both very disheveled with makeup and really frail, busted bodies. I remember one was short with blonde hair and blue eyes, while the other was a much taller brunette. Both really stood apart with their color schemes. They were taking off their jackets to reveal themselves in lingerie, but looked like they had stopped halfway in a pose-like position. Both of them looked just as shocked as I was. My first reaction was to wake my boyfriend up, but when that didn't happen fast enough, I kicked my foot up at the blonde woman to keep her away. The part of this that scares me the most is the fact that when my foot touched her, I felt her. I felt her warm arm pull away from me. Like I said before, both these women seemed just as startled and confused as I was, so that at least alleviated my stress a bit. After that intense minute, I just kind of realized it was a hallucination and I rolled over and went back to sleep, knowing but more so hoping they weren't actually there. They didn't bother me after that, but still, after much thought and discussion with my family and friends, 
I really believe that was some sort of interdimensional mistake, like astral projection. Peeping Tom. They say truth is stranger than fiction. Well, I guess my life is an example of that. Following is a five-month experience I had at a haunted apartment. Two incidents stand out that I remember. It was the fall of 1992. The first thing put me on edge. The second actually made me move out. I awoke one night to see a stretched black cloudy man-shaped figure with no eyes hovering over me. It lowered down onto me like it was mimicking or trying to assault me, but I didn't feel anything. I managed to scream at it, get off me, and it backed up into a wall and just disappeared. Three weeks later, he came back. Only this time, I didn't see him. I only felt him. But this time, he touched me. He sat on my bed, looking down at me. I could even feel my feet sink into the indentation made by his form. I was too scared to open my eyes. The seconds felt like minutes. Finally, I managed to move and woke myself up all the way. He wasn't visible, but I knew he was still there. I think I must have some sort of spirit guardian who kept him at bay, because two months before I moved out, there weren't any contacts by him, but I always felt this angry, obsessive presence there. After moving out, I found out that a man killed himself there. I'm wondering if it was the same one who had killed two women, then himself, the year before, when I used to live in another apartment in the same ground-level complex. I remember vividly, because... I was there. I watched with the other neighbors when they brought the bodies out on stretchers. The police wouldn't tell me anything, but the landlady did. That's how I found out. What's extra creepy is that when he was alive, this 20-year-old guy would sneak around my windows all the time. I caught him once running away from my bedroom window. He had been listening to my phone call and I was pissed. He had some sort of obsession with me. Seems he got what he wanted, at least for a few months. Peeping Tom guy turned into a Peeping Tom ghost. Go figures. The Customer I'm currently a pizza delivery driver for Domino's, and I was working a later shift one night. Of course, I was told to go deliver a pizza to this apartment complex I'd been to several times before. For the privacy of the customer, I'll call him Scruffy. I show up at Scruffy's apartment and knock on the door. He shouts to me to come in, so I did because I was invited. I was looking for a kitchen table or counter to set the pizzas on, and then I looked over and accidentally saw him dressing. I looked away as fast as possible and set the pizzas down on the counter after I finally found it. Scruffy pays me for the pizza and asks to talk. Thinking nothing of it, I talked with him for a bit. I don't know, it bought a few extra minutes on the clock. Except Scruffy didn't want to talk about things you would bring up with a perfect stranger. No, the first question he asked me is if I was LGBT. That's a strangely personal question to ask your pizza delivery boy. But I kept talking and he kept going on to really explicit topics, and he kept bringing up again and again how lonely he was. He was so lonely. And then he started going into a tangent about his past. All the while, he kept mentioning how God will help you if you make sure to let him in. Or if you can't talk to your father, you can always talk to the All-Father. It was really strange, and it just kept coming up again and again. It was really bizarre and really uncomfortable. He kept bouncing back and forth between ultra-religious weird stuff and very explicit things he wanted to do. And to make matters worse, the entire time I was there, he was also desperately trying to get me to sleep with him. Every time I tried to leave, he kept getting angry and yelling at me to shut the door. Eventually, I was able to get out of there, and I told my managers. 
Hopefully, we never hear or see from Scruffy again on deliveries. I'm certainly not going back. Well, I hope you enjoyed those four terrifying true experiences. These stories were all submitted by viewers just like you. If you have true experiences of your own, or even creepy pastas that you'd like to be narrated, you can submit them to the email listed in the description below. Happy haunting!